Umbra Daycare is trying their best to lock this thing. Wow! I don't know what it is, but they're just running over. Fucking Thanos! The job swaps are coming through. Big, big, big follow-ups. A lot of burst potential. Like I said before, Paladin plays really well in an organized composition. So if you have a lot of damage dealers and Paladin to keep them safe, it can be really hard to come back. As you saw, Corker went down as well. They do manage to take out Hexa, but look at the LBs sitting in the pocket. Four team, while Salil is pushing up to the point, they're still sitting on four LBs to stop this team from being able to basically prevent this loss. Right, the golden rule guys, make sure to always be on that point. That's what they did, they let Salil be on the point! But Salil's down, the rest of the team is down to what? That was a massive LB! Comet well, into a team. skydive was yeah. incredible. The combo was really well played. That's something that's really hard to pull off in normal play without voice, but these guys are in the coordinated just right, and that was the burst you pretty much need to save the game. Right now, Astro is pushing that point back to equilibrium. They're trying to get it back into the middle, and now they want to first check points on their way. And that could have gone either, either direction, because they could have used Red Mage Silence to prevent those LBs from flying out in the first place, and then follow up into multiple LBs. Uh, but they, they didn't go that route. We're still sitting on Southern Cross, though, so there is a turnaround to be had. However, we have a Flatus Purgation that does do work right there. Southern Cross didn't fly, but it looks like Hexa didn't get a victory off of that one. It's unfortunate Hexa. Hexa trying their best. Hexa, oh no, Pasta grabbed his pot off the floor. By the way, if you did not know, if you're a Pasta, you will drop on the floor a little health kit that will heal you. And that's one of the ways to kind of get around to being healthy in this game, by trying to grab these that pop on the floor every... Few seconds, not seconds, but it's a bit of time for the game. And you cannot pick them up while you're at full health. However, some jobs, or you can you can purposely get attacked, but you can keep their potion. While it may not be a game for you, you can prevent the game for the enemy team. For example, Warrior can eat their own HP, Dark Tank can eat their own HP. So you can use that to soak a potion before you do a fight so they have nothing to fall back on. One of the things I used to do as a tank on uh, Warrior is that as soon as fight uh, starts, I try to play around 4 30 around the uh, spawn points of the health pods. And I'm able to grab one mid fight because I know what's going to appear. And speaking of appearing, it looks like the daycare center is appearing front and center to take a win off this team. They're trying their best. They're running down Korka. Korka is trying their hardest to outrun the kids. The kids are fat. The kids are doing well. The kids are good right now. They are doing great. This is actually a really smart tactic right here. They have four players push, uh, pushing while uh, pushing the enemy team, that is, while one player is actually on the point moving in slowly. Yep. And, and if nobody's on the point for a few seconds, the, the crystal will reset back to middle slowly. So in this in this particular situation, they don't even have to try to win. They just have to keep the enemy from getting on the point, and when time runs out, they'll, they'll play victory. Right, and uh, thankfully for Team Umbra, the daycare center team, they are trying their best to stay on this point and keep it going. Uh, looks like it's about to head back into in the middle in just a second. Ooh, never mind, looks like... Oh yeah, it is going back into the second half. Yeah, misread that. But oh my gosh, this is going back and forth. There's a big team fight on their team side. There's one over here. But all in all, it's still in the favor of Team Umbra, ideally. If they're able to keep their team off the point when uh, overtime comes through, they'll win. Because up to the 94%, they're so close to victory right now. They almost have their checkpoint shattered, so it doesn't look like Phalanx will be up in time unless we go into a multi-trickled team battle. We'll see how Palace LB generates in a moment. We are sitting on Southern Cross. Uh, we will be having Dragoon and, and Ninja LB up in just a moment. However, Astra is, is pumped and ready to go. This is it, guys. This could be the team fight right here to determine who wins going for the tournament. This is two to two. One of these teams will fall. One will move forward. It looks like the first one to fall is Summoner on Astra's side. And it looks like Umbra is so healthy right now. They're so good. No healer, and they're, they're alive. They still have some resources. It looks like Astra trying their best to stay in there, but they're slowly dropping. Their resources are low. Dragoon is out of resources. He's down. Monk is next. MT Booth is trying their best to stay in the point. They Remember, guys, two seconds off that point, they die and they lose. It's over? Is that the game? It's over. <gasps> it kind of, that, that Southern Cross was really good. For all the whips we saw earlier, that Southern Cross was incredible. And I think maybe maybe Bahamut came out a little too late for it to make a difference over on Astro's side. Well played by Hexa. Great job. That LB finally came through at the right moment, as Rin said. And you just pretty much won your team the ticket to the next stage of the tournament. The kids have done it. They've taken your prayers. And they are now moving forward. Rin. I didn't think the kids would take the win. That could have gone honestly either way. When they came in for a fight, 
each team was ready and they cleaned up shop. But that early advantage, getting to push past that first checkpoint, it makes a huge difference. Because when you go into overtime and you're against your own checkpoint, you just have time. You have to wait, giving them time to regroup, come back in, and, and they know where you're going to be because you have to be on the checkpoint as the as the team that's behind. You. And guys, don't take it as a blueprint for the match. Sometimes if you play too aggressive, things might fall. So you got to be really careful what you do. There's a lot of ebb and flow that goes into a lot of it, understanding when to give up time. Uh, we said always be on point, and that, that's a fairly good thing for, for when you're in solo queue, but uh, knowing when to regroup, knowing when to go in, it's very important. Yes. And speaking of going in, it looks like Team Daycare Fight Club will be heading forward. Unfortunately, Team Nightmare Before Thanos, you guys tried really hard. We loved your cosplays, great ideas, but unfortunately you will not be moving Forward. We do appreciate you guys being here. You guys are doing really great. Thank you. Absolutely, the great, great, great. I did not expect that to go to five. Right? Great job on both teams. Thank you so much for playing. Congrats to Daycare Fight Club. So, next match will be Hidden Gems versus Hotline Eorzea. Uh, we're at the middle point of the tournament now. So, two more matches for the